just say that for the first time ever yesterday, we started seeing this angle behind the kicker on a consistent basis. We saw it in the NFL Network game, Colts-Patriots. Yeah. I just love getting that look. It gives you an idea of what the kicker is dealing with. Yeah, I hear you there. You know, it is a great, great angle. We saw in the long kick that was attempted, I think, by the Patriots, high it snap. Was. yep. Yeah, and it just, gives you, it just gives you a greater appreciation of what that play is all about. You don't need any other angle for that. All you need is that big, giant yellow U. And you see the ball, and you can see if it goes through or not. Yeah. I, I think that should be the default angle. Use Skycam. We were having the conversation in the control in the viewing room yesterday about how I don't know, different Skycams you can do different things, but get that Skycam down there. I like it. And, I like and, it and all give except us that on shot. really long field goals. Yeah, that's where because like, then you don't know. Like I think they showed in one of the games yesterday they showed that angle. It was a really long field goal, and I went, "Oh man, right down the middle," and it was like five yards short. It might have been the game in Germany. The Colts didn't they attempt a really long field goal at one point? Uh, but they were showing it behind. I'm going, oh, man, he knocked it in. And they're like, oh, and he comes up short. You couldn't tell there. I think that's you know the I mean? one where it was the high snap. I guess that's the down. one maybe I'm thinking I about. Maybe yeah, you're right. I, can't I know. We watched so much damn football together. There. But that was a, this game yesterday was exciting. If you like points and plays and yards on the field, that's for sure. Well, I'm going to sound the alarm here a little bit for the Lions. Yeah, go ahead. They need it. Because yeah. they had two weeks to get ready for this game. Right. Chargers played last Monday night yeah. in New York. Right. Got you know a physical, yeah. tough game. Right, offense was stifled and yep. stymied by the Jets. Guys banged up a little bit more. Got to fly back across the country. Short week. I don't like this scheduling clerk. We were talking about it not long ago yeah. with somebody else. Where bye weeks and Monday yeah, night. Yeah, you game. got a bye week and then you got a team coming off a Monday night game. It's not fair to the to the Chargers. Man, they answered the bell. And where's the Lions' defense? Yeah. It Bangles shouldn't have been. Bengals 49ers you were talking about. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's what right. it was. Yep. It shouldn't have been. Right. It shouldn't have been like this. It shouldn't have been so close. It should have been the Lions throttling the Chargers, stifling and stymieing the Justin Herbert-led offense. That's what surprised me. And I assume that stadium was full of Lions fans, right. and they were using the silent count on offense – for LA, I think I think what happens in SoFi Stadium because of that roof, it's so loud. Both teams have to use the silent count yeah. on a regular basis. Yeah. But I, I just I think that it's alarming if you're a Lions fan that it was as close as it was, and that they gave up as many points as they did to the Chargers, given the broader circumstances. Bye week for the Lions, six day turnaround, cross country, tough physical game against the Jets. They shouldn't have scored that many points no, against the I Lions. think the jury is out still on how good the Lions defense is. We know it's better than last year. That that's for sure, right? For but but I think the thing we can question is, you know, haven't played a lot of great offenses and offenses with firepower like Seattle scored 37. We know Mahomes and, you know, uh Chubbs Tony dropping all those catches in the first game certainly left some plays on the yard, right? We know what the Ravens did. Uh, I've, I've had a few conversations about this on my podcast because the Lions, you know, their fans, they always tweet into me, hey, what's our defense doing? What's your blah, 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 right? Well, I mean, we'll hit on the offense in a second here. But the defense, Mike, to your point and the concern is, one, there's a lot of good. There's not a lot of great, right? There's only, to me, one blue chip, I can make a superstar play every game type of guy, and that's Aiden Hutchinson. There's a lot of other good guys in the front seven, but not guys that just go, oh, wait, he creates chaos and makes plays and Fs the play up like we talk about. He, to me, is the only guy on that end. The other aspect of this, and this is something I've, I've hit on a few times, is they – We've talked about the Chargers. They got big receivers who don't separate, right? Didn't matter yesterday. Detroit doesn't like to play man-to-man. -man. They don't play man. To me, it's one of the issues with their team. So now you're talking about they don't have a big-time pass rush as a unit, and then you play zone coverage behind it all the time, and you got to play a guy like Justin Herbert, and Kellen Moore is a pretty damn good coach, and those receivers got a good feel for where to sit in the zone and how to attack it in there. And that, to me, is one of the things to watch out for with Detroit here. And I do think they're a you know blue-chip player away in the secondary from being real good. They've played a lot of bad offenses in the NFL this year. I think that's led to maybe a better statistical ranking than what they got. They need Chauncey Gardner Johnson back I think that'll help them but the defense to your point I think is the main concern with Detroit no doubt about that and you know we mentioned that schedule uh not a lot of great offenses in the coming weeks they've no. got the Bears at home Sunday right then they've got the Packers for the Thanksgiving game right at the Saints yeah who knows about the Saints at that point yeah. at the Bears 
Broncos week 15, then it's at Vikings, at Cowboys, Vikings yeah, to end the it's, season. It's, you're and like you said, not great offenses there. Those last three games, though, that'll be the that'll that's going to be the test. Yeah, and for a game like yesterday, whatever the Chargers did, you know when it's time for the Vikings and the Cowboys to play them. Let's look at that film. Let's see what the Chargers did, and let's do some of that same stuff. Yeah, yeah. or 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 you know zig based on whatever zag they think we're going to do based right. on that stuff. But regardless, that becomes the foundation for trying to crack the code on the Lions' defense. I, 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 there, there's certainly going to be some of that, you know, no doubt. I think the 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 other aspect or the thing, you know, that's going to help them out is what we saw yesterday is just how good – when their offensive line is healthy, which are, they're, they're pretty close to what their original unit should be there in Detroit and how the season started, you see yesterday – I know this Chargers defense isn't good, but it had been a little better as of late. They couldn't stop any aspect of Detroit's offense at all. I mean, the two-headed monster that they got at running back behind that offensive line, that's dangerous. Jameer Gibbs is starting to look like, I know Montgomery had the better day, right? But that was because of the 75-yard touchdown on carry-per-carry carry basis. Gibbs is somebody that I, he catches your eye, right? I mean, to me, he does. When he has the ball, I go, holy crap, who is that guy flying up the sidelines there? You, know, you couple that, the offensive line, the run game, Goff being one of the best play-action quarterbacks in football. They got a great play-action attack. And then you got Amon Ra, St. Brown, and Laporta, right? And, you know, Brock Wright, who's a good, damn good tight end there. That Detroit's offense is going to have to be the star of the show there. And we'll see what this Detroit defense does down the stretch. But certainly letting up a few too many big plays here uh, the last few weeks. We'll see where it goes. Three Lions rookies have generated 400 or more yards from scrimmage and four touchdowns in a three-game span. Jameer Gibbs this year. Barry Sanders in 1989, and Billy Sims mm. in 1980. So pretty good company yes. for Jameer Gibbs so far. Along the way to that last-second victory, yeah. there was a decision made by Dan Campbell to go for it on fourth and two from the Chargers 26 with 147 to right. play. Now, it's a makeable field goal. The issue is how much time do you leave on the clock for Justin the Chargers? Herbert, who's yeah. moving the ball on us all and, day, And this is, this is like analytics time, like – Percent chance winning if you kick the field goal, make it and give them the ball versus percent chance winning if you go for it and don't get it. Yeah. What's your percent there? And there's the play, shotgun formation. Jared Goff finds Laporta. Sam Laporta yeah, for the right. first down, and it allows them to milk the clock down to the final seconds for the game-winning field goal. So a great decision by Dan Campbell. Gutsy decision by Dan Campbell. Let's hear from Jared Goff after the game on Dan Campbell's decision to go for it on fourth and two. With our guy, I kind of lean towards we're going until he tells us we're not. Um, and, and that's not just in that situation. That's kind of in every fourth down that we, we get. Um, and had a good feeling he would go for it just like that area we were in. We kind of wanted to get an extra five or ten yards to secure it, as well as I'm sure in his head he didn't want to give – Justin the ball back with a minute and a half. So there was many factors going into that, but yeah, he's got he's got big balls and he showed it there. And uh, it was uh, it's a lot of fun when he puts the ball in our hands to to make the play. Wow, that didn't get bleeped. I thought that was going to get bleeped. Not with all, right. all your not without show. your dirty mouth not here today. <laughs> well, a lot of times the when they have a chance to bleep yeah. it ahead of time, they right. do because they have to bleep us anyway. Yeah, so yeah. anyway, I'm, I'm glad it wasn't bleeped. That's what he said. That's what he said. Uh, but but yeah, this is where. The influence of analytics, I think, makes sense because yeah. you have to think about not just what happens it's if I feel don't for make the game. it. Yeah, 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 all and of it. Yeah, yeah I, we don't. Yeah, I mean, if, I'm if not it usually was, for kicking hey, the field goal. That was one where I went. Six, I get six, it. If right. it's six six, you kick the field goal. Exactly. When it's 38, 38 right? And it's been up and down, up and down, and the up and down. Quarterback's grooving exactly. on the other side. Exactly right. That's what we talk about. It's a, it's the it's the, it's that it's your example you gave where you go. Wait, this is a field goal, you know, field position territory game. Why are we going for it now? Last night, Jets right. Raiders, you kicked the field goal. Exactly right. Yeah. It's in that type of football game. But I think yesterday, Dan Campbell was four for five on fourth down gambles there. You know, so they were hot that way. The one they missed early on in the football game, I did not agree with that. It was 10 to three. They had just intercepted Justin Herbert, had the ball in the short field. Come away, go up 10 points. He went for it. They got stopped. You know, Either way, it didn't matter in the big picture of the football game. But yeah, they keep the pressure on you. And with that offensive line, when they get into you know, third and five or less, 
they got two plays, and they can run the ball on third and five and also, of course, you know, throw the ball and be aggressive off of it. But they got a lot of different ways to beat you because Ben Johnson is extremely creative. They got a lot of different run game schemes they hit you with. They got some playmakers with the ball in their hands. If they can get Jamison Williams, their first-round pick from two years ago, really going, I think it'll take their offense to a whole nother danger level uh, as far as that's concerned. But, damn, they look good on that side of the ball yesterday. The Hunters have become the hunted, though, and it's going to be interesting down the stretch. They're going to get everything that their opponents have each and every week. The Lions have that shine now to them. Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from Pro Football Talk.